This is 22 Talk, Ruger, Mark III, 2245 RP. For our first range set today, we're going to shoot a total of 30 rounds through three magazines. The targets we're shooting are set up at 10 yards for this set. We're going to do the first 10 using our standard two-handed grip at our left hand 8-inch splatter target. Our next 10 we're going to shoot at the right hand 8-inch splatter target using double taps. And then we're going to do our last 10, set, 10 round set at the 6-inch splatter targets, alternating between the left hand and the right hand target, seeing how we can do doing a slow measured pace moving from one target to the next. The ammunition that we're shooting today is the Browning Performance Rimfire Ammunition. This has a 40 grain lead round nose projectile. The box advertises 1,060 feet per second for a handgun with a 6 inch barrel. Now we're not going to chronograph it today, but it's something to keep in mind for when we eventually do. And now, let's hit the range! Our first 10 shots through the firearm on that lower left hand target are nothing to brag about. Though I think looking at our next 10 on the double taps and then our left right left right on the top two targets, we can say that potentially with regular practice this could again be a firearm that we can shoot some very precise groups with and let's see if that trend continues here as we go forward. The Ruger Mark III 2245 is a blowback action semi-automatic competition pistol chambered in 22 long rifle. The version we're shooting here today is 8.5 inches long, 5.5 inches high, 1 inch wide, and weighs in at 32 ounces. It features a 5.5 inch stainless steel bull barrel and the firearm has the blued finish. Now you could get it in the stainless steel finish that was available as well. The 2245 firearms feature the Zytel polymer frame and the 2245 has the same grip angle and a very similar style grip that you would find on a 1911 pistol minus the thumb, the grip safety. Now one thing to keep in mind here is the version we're shooting of the Mark III 2245 is the target version. This has the stainless steel receiver, stainless steel barrel and it's a little heavier than the 2245 light as a result, which has the aluminum receiver and aluminum barrel and weighs in at about one and a half pounds compared to the two-ish pounds of the hunt or target version of the 2245. This version of the 2245 came with the fixed front sight and a fully adjustable rear sight. You'll notice here that I have replaced that front sight with a high visibility fiber optic front sight. Now you'll see I also have the Ruger rail attached to the firearm. In the past I did have a burst fast fire attached, though I have removed that. I intend to put one of my hollow suns on this firearm, however I thought I had a mount for it and it turns out I don't. I've left the rail on there until I can get that hollow sun mounted. Another point we're going to mention here on the Ruger Mark III 2245 is the version I'm shooting here today is the RP model. And you'll notice I have the Hogue grip on this firearm. There was also a more budget friendly version we'll say that was non-RP which just had a polymer grip. You could not replace the grip panels. The RP stands for replaceable grip panel. Now if you see these used and you will want to change your, if you're a person who's going to want to customize it and change your grip panels, make sure that you get the RP version and not the one that you cannot change the grips on. If you get the non-RP one, you're stuck with basically grip tape or a grip sleeve. So keep that in mind. In our second range set here today, our first 10 shots, we're going to do two shots with our two-handed grip, transition to our right hand and shoot four shots, and then transition to our left hand and shoot the last four shots. From there, we're then going to practice our one-handed shooting, 
and then finish the 10, the 30 round set with some one handed double taps. Before we talk a little more about the firearm, how about a little more range time? safety on. Even with the setup on my Mark III is not very left handy friendly. Now, right hand target. Looking at our bottom two targets, while again, I think we shot unremarkable groups with the one-handed shooting. I think it again shows that if we regularly practiced with this firearm it would be the bee's knees for us even as a one-handed shooter. So we're gonna call it a pass. Let's take a break from the range action and discuss some of the safety features on this firearm. On the left side of the frame there is a manual thumb safety up for safe down for fire. There's also a loaded chamber indicator that's a visual and tactile loaded chamber indicator. You can see throughout this video when we have point of view cam showing, you can see that little bit of plastic sticking out on the left side of the firearm. There's also a magazine disconnect on this firearm. Now while I'm not a fan of this, there's going to probably be some people that try to comment about things you can do about that. We're not going to discuss that in this video and we're probably not going to allow it in the comments. I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube as far as discussing safe modifications that could negatively affect the safety of your firearm. That's just the nature of the beast. YouTube already dislikes us enough as it is by the nature of the content we produce. Sucks. Anyway, before we get into the some of the customizations that have been done to this firearm that don't affect the safety of it, how about a little more range time? For our last 30 shots, we did left, right, left, right action on our top two six inch splatter targets at 10 yards. First 10 was left, right, left, right. The next 20 were double taps, two on the left, two on the right, etc. You would have seen in there we had one failure. And this is where that competition bolt comes into play compared to the stock bolt. With the stock bolt that runs flush with the frame, it would have taken me slightly longer to clear that. With my competition bolt, once I recognized the failure, I was easily able to grab onto that extension on the end of the bolt, clear that, and then proceed with my test. So that is, in my opinion, one of the advantages of the Volkortz and competition bolt. And I believe that Ruger in the Mark IV version of this 
added a little bolt-on extension for such an occasion. Let's move on. For the conclusion of our video, let's talk about some of the customizations that have been done to this firearm. I live about a stone's throw from the Volkortsen gun shop. And back when I acquired this firearm, while I couldn't acquire one of their custom firearms, I did speak to them about some parts that I could get and things that I could do that fit my budget to try to get closer to that. Now, as you'll see in this video, I do have the Volkortsen match bolt in this firearm that has their gold fancy finish on it. Works fantastic. For me, it's always been good. Now that's not to say that this firearm stock wasn't fantastic, because it was. And the only reason I customized it, frankly, was for the fun of it and to see what I could do. I didn't make it any more reliable. It was already supremely reliable when I got it. Really all I did was make it look a little flashier and maybe change the trigger pull slightly, make it a little crisper on the trigger or something like that. But it's not so drastically different that it's like a custom shop gun. Yes, it is a little better than stock, but not so much better that I'm going to say it's some custom shop gun that's worth millions of dollars or whatever. It's a home gunsmith job, done for fun, and frankly, it was every bit that, and it continues to be that. A very fun firearm. If you can get past the point of needing a mallet to take it apart, and, well, frankly, it's not the easiest gun ever to work on, it is a gun that is highly customizable. I have changed out every part inside this gun, and as you see, including the bolt, and it works extremely reliably, probably close to, if not every bit, as good as it did from the manufacturer. Now, you don't need to customize your Ruger Mark III or Ruger Mark firearm. They're already very accurate, very reliable, very shootable firearms from Ruger. But one of the nice things about them, like many other firearms out there, is if you do want to customize them, they are very customizable. As you see, I customize all the internal parts. I've also changed out the sights on them. I have the rail on there, and while in the past I did run, say, the Burris Fast Fire on there, in the future I'm gonna run something that I can see a little clearer with my eye, like, say, my Hollow Sun sight that I have left over from our previous SIG video. So all around, I think the Ruger Mark III is an excellent firearm. It's very fun, very reliable, and with it being now replaced by the Mark IV, you can probably find them at very reasonable price. And if you're looking to customize it, that's a bonus. Well, anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a good day. Or at least if I do, I couldn't find it. So we're doing iron sights today. Oh, cat, stop shooting. There's a cat out there. <laughs>